video. Actually, this is all about Cavalier King Charles Spaniels. And if you are not aware, this is Harper, which is my Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. I wanted to bring you a video telling you all about the breed in case you are interested in this wonderful breed. Now Harper will be four years old in April. She is not my first Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. I have had this breed for many, many years and I absolutely love this breed. And I'm gonna tell you all about them. So the first thing that you should know is that this is not an inexpensive breed. In order to get a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel from even the most decent of breeders, Expect to pay between $1,800 to $2,000, and that is in the U.S. And it can go up from there depending on which breeder you get from. If you get from a show breeder, expect to pay maybe a little bit more. And I'm not really sure exactly why they are such an expensive breed, but I really like that they are up in the upwards range for a dog breed because I feel that it keeps away a lot of the backyard breeders. And I can tell you from experience, this breed and the breeders that breed them are very, very close knit. They try and protect the breed at all costs and they really try to not let them get into the hands of inexperienced backyard breeders and God forbid puppy mills. So I think that's the main reason they keep that price up and they are able to do so over the years. And I really respect them for that. Now, Cavalier King Charles Spaniels are a very, very old breed that comes from England. A long, long time ago when the dogs were brought over from England, they didn't have an acceptance into AKC. So they made their own dog club, which is the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel Club. And you can find them by searching CKCS which is very, very different from the CKC. So please don't get that um, confused with the CKC. This old club is considered the quote unquote old club because it's the first club and the most precious club for this breed. Now, most Cavaliers are also dual registered with the AKC, which of course is the American Kennel Club. Now, I am talking just about in the United States because that is what I am familiar with. I am not sure the different clubs in the different countries. And over in England, Cavalier King Charles Spaniels are very, very popular. As a matter of fact, Harper's heritage comes a lot from the dogs directly from England. I got her from a breeder in Louisiana who is a show breeder and he actually imports all of his dogs from the Pascaval line, which is over in England. Now this breed was bred strictly to be a companion dog and that is exactly what they are. If you are looking for the most lovable breed the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel would be the one. They are absolutely here just to please you and they just want to be in your lap at all times. Now, as you can see, she is quite content right here in my lap. She absolutely loves nothing more than to snuggle and to be in your lap all day long. If you are sick in bed for 18 hours, she will be right there with you the entire time. She really is a very, very devoted dog. And from my experience with Cavalier King Charles Spaniels, that is their personality. They are absolutely the most loving dog there is. And it's sort of like um, they just, you know, just are like, love me, love me, love me, pet me, pet me, because I am the only dog in this world that you should be ever, ever interested in. <laughs> and that is how they are. They're just extremely, extremely loving dogs. Now, if you are considering a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, there are several things that you should be aware of. One of them is that they do tend to have health issues and you have to be extremely careful on which breeder you go with to help minimize those health issues. You're not going to get away from it altogether, unfortunately, and that is one of the things that disheartens me about this awesome, wonderful breed, is the fact that they do have health issues. 
Now, some of your breeders do test for the different, uh, more um, serious issues. And one of those issues is called SM. Now, the reason why this has become prevalent in this breed is because if you look back at the history of the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, you will notice that their head shape has changed quite a bit over the years. So if you look back, way back when they first came over from England, they didn't really have this kind of short muzzle and this kind of domey head that they have right now. They had a much longer muzzle. And over the years, breeders have kind of shaped the shape of the Cavalier today. And unfortunately, even though that is my favorite look and everyone else's favorite look, that beautiful, beautiful head, and if you can see, Harper does have a beautiful head, um, but that has caused a little bit of health, well not a little bit, it has caused some problems over the years. I'm sure that they didn't realize this when they were kind of breeding to shorten the muzzle, but what happened is, is that their muzzle got shorter and their heads got a little more domier and a little bit shorter, if you can kind of see. She's kind of at a weird angle because I have her up on my lap right now, but hopefully you can see what I'm talking about. But what has happened is that their little brains have kind of gotten squished and that can cause some neurological problems. And one of the scariest things in a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel is this SM. Now, some breeders are, bre are testing for SM by doing MRIs on their breeding stock, which will kind of tell them if their dogs that they will be breeding are carriers for the disease. So that's one thing that you can look for and ask for if you are in the search for a Cavalier, if your breeder tests their breeding stock for SM. Now, another very, very scary health problem with Cavaliers is their heart issues. It is said that all Cavaliers will have some sort of a heart murmur by the age of five. That is so scary to me and it's, it's just something that is prevalent in the breed. I am not really sure where that came from, but unfortunately it is very, very real in this breed and is something that you need to be aware of. Now, because of these problems, I highly recommend pet insurance as soon as you like get a Cavalier picked out from a breeder and you are getting ready to take him or her home. I would call and get the pet insurance before you even hit the door with your new baby. And that way you can go to the vet and get a clearance for them right when they get home and then you are good to go. Now, the pet insurance that I love is Pet Plan. It's an insurance company that is in the United States. I have done a video on Pet Plan, but their website is gopetplan.com. If you are in the market for pet insurance, give them our name because we do get some sort of little referral thing or something if you want to, but you know, we would appreciate it, of course, if you heard about it from us. But I absolutely love Pet Plan Insurance and I think it is the best insurance out there because they will cover things that are hereditary and predispos predisposed for the breed. So God forbid if your baby would happen to come down with SM or any heart issues, because it is a hereditary disease, some pet insurances will not cover it, which I think is absurd, but Pet Plan will. So that is why I recommend Pet Plan Insurance, and I recommend it for any dog breed, especially the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, because they are known to have these issues. 
So Harper will be four in April, and she has been doing really, really well. She does have a very, very slight murmur, and that was only detected because I brought her to a cardiologist for a checkup. I knew that I wanted to be proactive because of the issues with Cavaliers and their heart issues. So I took her to a board certified cardiologist and I had a echocardiogram done. It showed that she had very, very slight regurg in her valves and it was only detected by him listening to her with his um, stethoscope for about 10 minutes, he said, and then he finally heard a very slight murmur. So, you know, it wasn't the news that I wanted. Uh, of course, I wanted to, you know, have him say that, oh, there is absolutely no murmur at all. But he said that this is very, very common in this breed, as I just, you know, told you. And it probably wouldn't have been detected at all had I, had I not been proactive with her. So I do give her a couple of supplements to help keep her heart healthy. I will leave the supplement names in the description box below, but one of them is called um, Ubiquinol. So it comes in a yellow kind of pump bottle and it's from Mercola Healthy Pets. And I give her that every single day in her food. And I also give her a supplement called Cardiac Canine Process that I buy on Amazon. So I give her those two things to help keep her heart and her valves very strong, and I'm trying to be as proactive as I can to ward off those heart issues as long as I can. And so far, she is doing excellent. Another health issue that you have to be aware of with Cavaliers is their eyes. They can have eye issues with their retina, and they can have ingrown eyelashes such as dystichia and lots of things to having to do with the eyes. So I also recommend that you be proactive and have a checkup at least once a year with a board certified ophthalmologist. Yes, this is not a cheap breed, as I said before. Not only is she you know, are they expensive to acquire, but you do have to be very proactive in their health care and get them checked up by these specialists because of these health problems that are prevalent with the breed. I am happy to say that the only thing that is wrong with Harper's eyes is that she does have those ingrown eyelashes called dystichia, but they're not really bad and they don't really aggravate her. So we are good to go with her retinas, which of course is the most important thing. Now she also did start getting some little fat deposits in her eyes and they checked all of her blood work and her blood work is fine, her cholesterol is fine. So they're not really sure what that is, but he said that it really doesn't cause any issues and she doesn't have any cataracts or any problems with her retina. So I'm really, you know, happy about that. Now let's talk about grooming. The Cavalier is really, really easy to groom. There is not much that you have to do besides keeping them clean with regular baths and the occasional clip. Now, one of the things that really, really bothers me when I see a Cavalier is when those people will clip them down to where they clip their ears and they're such a gorgeous breed that there is no reason for that. I do love their long ears and Harper has nice long ears and they're kind of curly too. Some Cavaliers have curlier ears and some don't. But I really don't clip anything on her except for I will kind of um, trim up her feet a little bit. She needs it right now. But I love these slippers and they're supposed to have these little slippers. They're sort of like Grinch feet. And I just trim around, or have Miss Lynn, our groomer, trim around this just a little bit. It drives her crazy because she wants to kind of like, you know, trim her feet to where her nails show, and that is a no-no. No, no, Miss Lynn, we don't allow that at all. And I love that they have their fringes on their, like the back, see that? On the, this leg right here. <laughs> You can see the fringe on her leg, so I love that. But I absolutely do not trim anything on her body at all. I do not trim her tail. So the only thing that I get done on her as far as trimming wise is just to neaten up her feet a little bit 
and her sanitary area. And then I also will every now and then just go around the edges of her ears to make sure that we don't have any flyaways or anything like that. But other than that, it's mainly just bathing and keeping her face very clean. She does have a little bit of issues with tearing. She always did. And so that's a little bit of an issue because her eyes can get a little stinky if I'm not really careful and use the peace and kindness in her eyes just like I do Stasi. Oh, and also I will use some Malisev wipes to kind of wipe this little area right here which helps to keep that yeast away as well. I don't use those on Stasi, but I do use them on Harper and they work really well for her. So I think that is just about all of the main points with this wonderful breed. If you are interested in a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, do your research. Do not jump in and just get this breed just because you love the way they look. They are amazing. As you can see, she is a little love bug. She absolutely is just the sweetest loving dog you can ever imagine. We love her. And I will never ever be without a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. And also a Shizu. Those are my two heart breeds. I love those breeds for each their own personalities and different things about each one of them, but I only want one of each at any one time. I also have fallen in love with a fluffy corgi, but I'm not getting one of those anytime soon, but maybe in a year or two, who knows, I might be adding that to my crew, maybe, because I absolutely love them as well. But I have some older pets right now. I have a few older cats and I have the old chihuahuas. So right now we are good with what we have, but in the future, I do love those fluffy little corgis, um, as well as of course my Cavalier King Charles Spaniel and my Shizu, which like I said, are definitely the two breeds for me. I think that it is so important if you're looking for any type of breed that you do your research to make sure that you will be matched perfectly with the breed of your choice. Never go into getting a breed just because you love the way they look. You have to really look at everything. You have to look at their personality, their grooming requirements, their health, everything, their activity levels, Everything needs to be matched to your personality to make sure that you are picking the correct breed for you. And I do know for sure that the Cavalier and the Shizu are definitely the breeds for me. So I hope this helped you. If you are interested in finding a breeder, please go to the Cavalier King Charles Club of America's website. I will leave that website in the description box below. You will find some great, great breeders on that website. Some of these breeders are dual registered with the AKC and I know Harper is um, registered with both of them, but her breeder is a member of the old club and generally those will be your better breeders. You know, like I said, most of them are dual registered with both registries, but the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel Club is very, very particular. They're very particular in the breeders that they allow to join the club, and they do have high, high standards. So that is a great place to start if you are interested in looking for a great breeder, which I highly recommend to, like I said, minimize those health issues as much as possible. For all of you Harper lovers, I hope that this gave you a good dose of Seeing Harper, I know that I have gotten asked so many times to do more Harper videos. Unfortunately, there's just not a whole lot to do with Harper other than give her her bath, which I've already done. And there really is not much else because all she does is sit and love us. But that is the best part, right? So thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed and we will catch you on the next video. Say bye. Say bye. Oh my goodness. Say bye everybody. I hope that her angle on the camera was the way you can really see how pretty she is. But I know she was like kind of just wanting to love on me. <laughs> and that's it guys. Have a great day. Bye bye. 
So I hope you enjoyed. For all of you Harper level, Harper, <laughs> for all of you Harper level, oh my goodness. I can't say that, Harper. I cannot say it. <laughs>